हेलो Tumitilaop na ang manok, hudyat na ng pagpasok. Paglilingkod na walang kapalit, sa bayan ng aming hati. Tara na, kaibigan, huwag kang magpaiwan. Gamitin ang dunong bansa ay susulong. Ating abutin ang pangarap liwan sa pamangkakas. Mahirap man ay kakayanin Sa pinagsamang lakas at galing Tagumpay ay mararating Tara na kaibigan Huwag kang magpaiwan Gamitin ang dunong bansa ay susuro At ikabutin ang pangarapiwan Sa pamamagitan na Sa pamamagitan na Pangarap kong magkaroon ng mabilis at murang transportasyon para sa lahat. Pangarap kong masagot ang malnutrition. Pangarap ko pong magkaroon ng effective communication means for emergency. Pangarap kong ma-maximize yung renewable energy source and to reduce the carbon dioxide emission. Pangarap ko pong maging scientist. Yung dao simulan na Humanda sabay-sabay akyat Hawak kamay tayo yang at lipat Lipat At inabutin ang pangarap iwan Sa pamamagitan ng aghag Ang kaunlaran ay makakamtan Kung lahat magtutulungan
tracing its roots back in 1901 from the then Bureau of Government Laboratories, which became the Bureau of Science, the Department of Science and Technology, Industrial Technology Development Institute, or DOST-ITDI, turned 119 years old on July 1, 2020. From basic researches to mapping of the country's flora and fauna, and other local resources for scientific studies, DOST-ITDI has been a vital instrument in establishing the research and development agenda in the country. It was 1958 when the Bureau of Science became the National Institute of Science and Technology, NIST, that industrial R&D started gaining ground while harnessing local resources and skills toward self-sufficiency and optimized productivity. Industrial R&D went full gear in 1987 when the NIST was renamed Industrial Technology Development Institute, focusing on four major functions, research and development, technical services, technology transfer, and custodian of the national units of measure to provide international traceability. DOST-ITDI research and development covers five major areas. Food, environment and biotechnology, chemicals and energy, Material Science and Packaging Technology All aimed at supporting and answering the needs of local industries. Complementing its R&D are its technical services, standards and testing, national metrology, and technology transfer aimed at harnessing local industries' productivity and competitiveness and translation of developed knowledge or innovation into the production sector, paving the way for new businesses or startups. As well, DOST-ITDI innovations serve as springboards for businesses to thrive and prosper. In support of the administration's thrust in addressing the COVID-19 pandemic, DOST interventions are anchored on the theme, Agama Teknolohiya, Sandigan ng Kalusugan, Kabuhayan, Kaayusan, at Kinabukasan at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic and when most of the country was in enhanced community quarantine, DOST-ITDI bravely rose to the call of duty, distributed ready-to-eat foods such as the Pack of Hope and Mung Bean Cocoa Milk Drink to our frontliners in Metro Manila and other regions in the country, produced face shields via 3D printing and donated these to hospital frontliners, developing prototypes and 3D printing critically important parts of hospital equipment and improved design of N95 masks to better protect the frontliners. The Institute is also providing interventions for our displaced countrymen who lost their jobs and livelihood by making training available online whenever necessary. And even before this pandemic, DOSD ITDI innovations were critical in rehabilitating communities that experienced calamities and even war and make them whole again. DOSD ITDI has been preparing for an innovative ecosystem for new knowledge and technology to thrive and help make us ready for Industry 4.0. DOSD ITDI aims to achieve kaayusan and ascertain the future or kinabukasan through its initiatives and help businesses and every Filipino adapt to COVID-19 under the new normal. State-of-the-art facilities are being established. Construction of the Simulation Packaging Testing Laboratory, SPTL, and Green Packaging Laboratory, GPL is ongoing. At the SPTL, stress conditions that affect products during transport are simulated that can help mitigate losses during distribution. While produced, products can be processed and packed in a green packaging laboratory. AMSIN or the Advanced Manufacturing Center, DOST's 3D Printing Technology Center, is a joint project with Metals Industry Research and Development Center, MIRDC. ITDI focuses on developing multiple 3D printing materials from local materials to reduce costs. Halal Food Research and Development Facility With this facility in place, the Institute hopes to develop new food products that are compliant to halal standards and as well support DOST as it responds to Republic Act No. 10817 or the Philippine Halal Export Development and Promotion Act. Enhancement of the competence and capabilities of the National Metrology Laboratory of the Philippines Expertise and facilities are being upgraded and construction of laboratory facilities for metrology and chemistry and biology are now ongoing. It is envisioned that the animal will provide the country with credible measurements
and traceability in the fields of physical, chemical, and biological metrology. And with the emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic, the OST response has been decisive, with the support of President Duterte and the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases, the DOST will establish the Virology Science and Technology Institute of the Philippines, or VIP, to be constructed at the new Clark Economic Zone in Capas, Tarla. The VIP shall be pursuing priority virology research and developing diagnostic kits, therapeutics, and vaccines for diseases caused by viruses, where DOST ITDI will have a critical function. From laying the groundwork for science and technology in the country, the Industrial Technology Development Institute of the Department of Science and Technology, through the years, which turned 119 last July, has been consistently providing innovations to industry to help make them competitive, emerging as a credible industry partner. The Institute has been instrumental as well in mitigating hazards improving the lives of disaster victims and communities to rise again. With so much optimism with this cooperation and bridging of talents and expertise, we look forward to enhance science, technology, innovation, competitiveness, and the emergence of new research and development capabilities that hopefully will translate into new products and services that meet the current future needs of our nation and the people. We have a separate changing room for men and women. We also have our stock room. We have also the raw material area. And also we have the washing area. Let's proceed to our processing area where we conducted halal bakery products such as halal loaf bread and halal pandesal. Packaging materials. 
The DOST Halal Research and Development Facility also accepts trainings, consultancy services, and assistance in the development of Halal Assurance System for firms, contract research for product development, and use of their facility for MSMEs, LGOs, and ACADEM. Tumitilaot na ang manok, hudyat na ng pagpasok. Paglilingkod na walang kapalit, sa bayan ng aming hati. Tara na, kaibigan, huwag kang magpaiwan. Gamitin ang dunong bansa'y susulong. Ating abutin ang pangarap ni Juan, sa pamangkakas. Mahirap man ay kakayanin Sa pinagsamang lakas at galing Tagumpay ay mararating Tara na kaibigan Huwag kang magpaiwan Gamitin ang dunong bansa ay susulong At ikabutin ang pangarap iwan Sa pamamagitan na Sa pamamagitan na maghang Ang kaunlaran ay makakamtan Kung lahat magtutulungan Tara na at sama-sama Itaguyod ang siyensya Maayos na bukas para sa Pilipinas Ang pangarap ko ay maging piloto Pangarap ko magkaroon ng Chief Alternative for Personal Hygiene. Pangarap kong magkaroon ng mabilis at murang transportasyon para sa lahat. Pangarap kong masagot ang malnutrition. Pangarap ko pong magkaroon ng effective communication means for emergency. Pangarap kong ma-maximize yung renewable energy source and to reduce the carbon dioxide emission. Pangarap ko pong maging Simula na, humanda sabay-sabay akyat, hawak kamay tayo'y ang ating lipat, lipat.
sa ating iparanya sa bayang Pilipinas. Ating abutin ang pangarap Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuhu. Good morning Facebook and YouTube virtual participants. Welcome to the second day of Halal Webinar Series. This is a continuation of our two-day webinar in Halal. Our topic today will deal on Halal Hasip. Our speakers will introduce you to Halal Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points. This virtual program is about to start. Moving on to the more formal part of the program, may I request everyone's attention for the opening prayer to be led by Ustad Azmi Sulaiman and followed by the singing of the National Anthem. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Rabbi Srahli Sadri Wa Yasirli Amri Wahlul uqdatan min lisani yafkahu kawli Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala Wa ba'd assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Panandali ang katahimikan para po sa ating panalangin Wa qala rabbukum udu'uni astajib lakum Amin ya rabbal alamin Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustakim Sirat Al-Ladin An-Amta Alayhim Gayri Al-Magdub Alayhim Walad-Dallin Amin Rabbana La Tuakhidna In Nasina Aw Akhtana Rabbana La Tuakhidna In Nasina Aw Akhtana ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به وأف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين أو الله وقم بوم إباتو استنبط سامين كون كميمان أي مكالمات أتمجملي O Allah, huwag mo pong iatang sa amin ang isang pasaning katulad ng pasanin na iniatang mo sa mga nauna sa amin. O Allah, huwag mo po ipasan sa amin ang anumang mga pasanin na wala kaming kakayahan magpasan para rito. Pagpaumanhin mo po kami sa aming mga kalabisan at mga kakulangan. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga kasalanan at kahabagan mo po kami O Allah, Ikaw ang aming tagapagtanggol, kawa igawad mo po sa amin ang tagumpay. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana, wa fil akhirat yasana tawakina adhabanar. Subhanaka rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun, wa salamun alal musalin, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم آمين يا رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين هدينا سرات المستقيم سرات الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم اجمع شامل المسلمين وكريستيان ولومت في مدينة دباو وسلم دائما مجتمعنا هذا بسلم والأمن والتقدم في بلدنا هذا آمين يا رب العالمين ربنا لا تزيغ قلوبنا بعد جهلتنا وهب لنا من لدن رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا أتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يسيبون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today to praise and worship you and give you thanks for all the things you continue to provide for ourselves and our families. Father, we humbly ask for forgiveness for all the times we have offended you. When we forget to acknowledge your presence in the image of our brothers and sisters, and for moments we fail to be good stewards of the blessings you have given us. Continue to guide and protect each one of us, Lord, that we may always walk in the light of your everlasting love and mercy. Grant us, Father, with your comfort in times of distress and with your strength in times of weakness. Bestow upon us your unending grace and healing that may, may in turn become instruments of gentleness and compassion to others. We ask all this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the prayer and the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Amen.
Okay, let me check first our participants from around the country who joined us on the second day virtually. We have participants from the U.S. regions, SUCs, and of course, our industry partners, government partners, and of course, friends from the media. Okay, again, we are live on our official Facebook page at DOST ITDI Updates and YouTube channel ITDI DOST. Here are our webinar rules and reminders. If you have not registered yet, kindly fill out the registration form posted by our chat moderators for your attendance. Again, the link is for those who have not yet registered. For your comments and questions later, utilize the Facebook comment section and YouTube live chat box. Our chat moderators will collect your questions and our speakers will answer some after the end of the presentation. Lastly, please share the live stream links as this is posted publicly and everyone is very much welcome to join. We will be giving e-certificates for those who have registered and accomplished our evaluation form. Okay, once again, good morning. So moving on, let us have our first speaker this morning. Our first speaker is a Science Research Specialist 2 at Product Development Section, Food Processing Division, DOSD ITDI, and a graduate of Bachelor in Technical Teacher Education, major in Food Technology at Sultan Kudarat State University, Isulan Sultan Kudarat. She is also a certified Halal Lead Auditor at International Halal Integrity Alliance, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. She will discuss the introduction to Halal Hasip. Help me welcome, ladies and gentlemen, our first speaker, Ms. Noraisa B. Ampuan. Thank you, Ms. Klang. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessing of Allah be upon you. So magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Or mapia mapita sa kita ng langon in magindalawon term. So today, our topic is all about the introduction to halal hazard analysis critical control points. So the outline of the course covers history of HACIP, introduction, definition of terms, prerequisite programs, launching the HACIP system in the workplace, Failure in implement, implementing halal hasip, emerging of halal hasip, and the benefits of halal hasip. History of hasip. In 1959 to 1960, NASA wanted to produce food for astronauts to guarantee food safety. So it was developed initially for the NASA space program with the intention of avoiding potentially disastrous consequences of failure above the Earth's atmosphere. So in 1963, World Health Organization issued HACCP principles in Codex Alimentarius or the Book of Food. Next, in 1973, NASA American Army Laboratory in Pillsbury Group Company made a common project for astronauts in food production. In 1985, USA National Science Academy suggested that HACCP should be applied in food operation for food safety. In addition, Howard Bowman, President of Science and Regulatory Affairs of Pillsbury Company, was the key figure in the development work for the space program and its later application throughout the company. So many of the world's best manufacturers use the HACCP system as a basis for their safety, food safety program. So, sa pamamagitan ng pagsusuri na maaaring maging sanhi o dulot ng kapahamakan sa isang produksyon, particular po sa pagkain, sistema at tamang pamamaraan ay kinakailangang maisagawa upang ito'y maagapan at, map at mapaliit ang pagkakataong magkaroon ng kontaminasyon at madaling pagkasira ng pagkain. So, ano po ba ang maibibigay ng HACCP system both manufacturer and consumer. So, yun po ay ang pagkakaroon ng peace of mind. So, 
So the introduction to halal hazard, uh, hazard analysis critical control points, this is the management system in which food safety is addressed through the analysis and control of biological, chemical, and physical hazard from raw material production, procurement, and handling to manufacturing, distribution, and consumption of the finished product. So, for the incorporation of HACCP to halal, it is basically the same as the international food sa sa safety system. Example, the hazard analysis critical control point or the HACCP, where the standards hazard are microbi uh, microbial, chemical, and physical. However, the hazard in halal HACCP has an additional hazard of the religious nature that aim to minimize the effectiveness of the halal system. So in the definition of terms, so when we said the CCP decision tree, a sequence of question to assist in determining whether a control point is a CCP. If meron a uh, in the step of the processing flow of a food production, kung either may CCP ba or na, uh, not CCP. So using the uh, CCP decision tree uh, must be applied. So control. To manage the condition of an operation to maintain compliance with established criteria. The, uh, the states where correct procedure are being followed and criteria are being met. Next is the control measure. When we say control measure, any action or activity that can be used to prevent, eliminate, or reduce a significant hazard. So like for example, uh, we tell our team to carry out our use with, uh, wearing Googles to protect the eyes. So that's a control measure. Another, if you send the staff on halal training course to understand how to do something, uh, how to do something safely, so that's also a control measure. Control point. So any step at which biological, chemical, or physical factors can be controlled. Corrective action, procedure followed when a division occurs. Next is criterion. This is a requirement on which a judgment or decision can be based. So in the critical control point, this is the step at which control can be applied and is essential to prevent or eliminate a food safety hazard or reduce it to an acceptable level. Next is critical limit. This is the maximum or a minimum value to which a biological, chemical, or physical parameter must be controlled at a CCP to prevent, eliminate, or reduce to an acceptable level to the occurrence of the food safety hazard. So uh, division means failure to meet a critical limit. So when we say HACCP plan, the written document which is based upon the principle of HACCP and which delineates the procedure to be followed. So HACCP system, this is the result of the implementation of the HACCP plan. So how about the HACCP team? This is the group of people who are responsible, responsible for developing, implementing, and maintaining the HACCP system. Next is the hazard. A biological, chemical, or physical agent that is reasonably likely to cause illness or injury in the absence of its control. So the following are the examples of hazards. So from bacteria, we have salmonella. So this is the bacteria that make people sick. Most people who get ill from salmonella have diarrhea, fever, and stomach cramps. Ang dahilan po nito ay ang pagkain ng raw or undercooked meat, poultry eggs, or egg products. 
Next is the toxins. So the example is the aflatoxins. This is the kind of toxins na maiexpose po dito ang mga tao kapag siya po ay makakain ng mga contaminated plant products as as peanuts or by consuming meat or dairy products from animals that ate contaminated feed. Next is the viruses. Uh, one of the example is the hepatitis A. So this is the kind of virus. Means of uh, this is the inflammation of the liver. Usually, ang cause po nito ay heavy alcohol use, toxins, and some medication. Next is the parasites. So the tapeworm and trichinella. So when we say tapeworm, this is a flat segment worms na namumuhay sa intestine. Usually nangyayari ito kapag uminom or nakainom ng contaminated water. Trichinella is a, is a genus of parasite, parasitic roundworms or phylum nematoda that the case is that, that cause trichinosis. So who, who get trichinosis? So anyone who eats or who eats raw or undercooked meat from infected animals can develop trichinosis. Next is the chemical. So it can cause, uh, example po ay pesticide, so it can cause harm if improper application of uh, pesticide exists. So how about the foreign bodies? Of course, the glass, metal, and etc. Next is the biochemical changes, like yung, uh, for example, is the histamine. So it is a chemical found in some of the body cell causes many of the symptoms of allergens such as runny nose or sneezing. So, in the incorporation of the halal concept or yung sa, ano, for additional, is yung sa najis. So, unaccept, uh, when we say najis, this is uh, the unacceptable field, impurity, and unclean. Examples are the pork, dog, vomit, urine, excrement, and toxicant, alcohol, uh, alcoholic beverages, and uh, blood, and pus. Next is the hazard analysis. This is the process of collecting and evaluating information on hazard associated with the food under consideration to decide which are significant and must be addressed in the HACCP plan. Next is monitor. This is to conduct a planned, sequ a planned sequence of observation or measurements to assess whether a CCP is under control and to produce an accurate record for future use in verification. So, prerequisite programs. This is the procedures including good manufacturing practices, that address operational condition providing the foundation for the HACCP system. Next is severity. This is the seriousness of the effects of hazard. Next is step, appoint a procedure, operation, or, uh, or states in the food sy system from primary production to final consumption. When we say validation, the element of verification focuses on collecting and evaluating scientific and technical information to determine if the HACCP plan, when properly implemented ba, will effectively control the hazard ba. So in verification, those activities other than monitoring that determine the validity of the HACCP plan and that the system is operati operating according to what is planned. So, ba, uh, pero bago po ang lahat, sa paggawa ng ligtas ng pagkain, unang-una po ay may mga kailangang isagawa na mga paunang programa. Ito po ay ang mga sumusunod. The facilities. So, it should be located, constructed, and maintained according to sanitary design principles. 
Kailangan din po na ang pagkakaroon ng linear product flow and traffic control para po maiwasan ang cross-contamination from raw to cook materials. So, para naman po sa paggawa ng produktong halal, kailangan na kailangan po ng ating facility ay para lamang sa halal production. So, para po maiwasan yung mga potential hazard on halal. Next is the supplier control. So, its facility should assure that its supplier have in place effective good manufacturing practices and food safety programs. This may be the subject of continuing supplier guarantee and supplier HACCP system verification. Siyempre po, ang ating approved supplier ay meron dapat halal certification or halal compliant po siya. Next is the specification. There should be written specification for all ingredients, products, and packaging materials. So, for us to be authentic sa ating mga ginagamit in food production. Number four is the production equipment. All equipment should be constructed and installed according to sanitary design principle. Preventive maintenance and calibration schedule should be established and documented. Siguraduhin po natin na ito ay hindi nagamit sa produksyon ng mga hindi halal na produkto to avoid cross-contamination of halal and non-halal products. So in cleaning and sanitation, all procedure for cleaning and sanitation of the equipment and the facility should be written and followed. Siguraduhin po natin na ang ginamit na panlinis ay hindi nahaluan ng har haram items or najis. So personal hygiene. All employees and other person who enter the manufacturing plant should follow the requirements for personal hygiene. So, training. So, all employees should receive documented training in personal hygiene, good manufacturing practices, cleaning and sanitation procedure, personal safety, and the rule in the HACCP program. Siyempre po, meron, meron din po silang training on halal, katulad po nito, para maisakatuparan or mabigyan ng pansin ang kahalagahan ng konseptong halal sa production. Next is the chemical control. The, this is the documented procedure and must be in place to assure the segregation and proper use of non-food chemicals in the plant. So in the receiving, storage, and shipping, all raw materials and products should be stored under sanitary conditions and the proper environmental conditions such as the temperature and humidity to assure their saf safety and wholesomeness. Next is the traceability and recall. All raw materials products should be lot coded and a recall system in place para mas mapabilis ang paghanap nito kapag kinakailangan, usually pag may mga retrieval ng mga items. So, next is the pest control. This is the effective, uh, effective pest control should be in place. So, other example of the prerequisite programs might include quality assurance procedure, standard operating procedure for sanitation, for sanitation, processes, product formulation and recipes, glass controls, procedure for receiving, storage and shipping, labeling, and employee, employee for food and ingredients handling practices. So, sa lahat po ng mga nabanggit ay marapat na maisagawa at maisakatuparan ng mga membro nito upang maging epektibo ito at makapagbigay hindi lamang ligtas na pagkain, masustansyang pagkain, pati din po sa halal na pagkain para sa mamayang Pilipino na Muslim or non-Muslim. So, launching the Halal HACCP system in the workplace. So, training to key personnel. So, tamang pagsasanay, particular sa mga sistemang kailangan sa pagpapatupad ng halal hasip, 
tulad ng Halal Awareness Training at iba pang mga programa. Ito po ay malaking pagkakataon na maisagawa ng maayos ang mga ito. So, hindi lamang po si care personnel ang dapat may training, pati din po ang lahat ng membro nito. Bakit? Kasi, kasi po magdudulot ito ng mabagal na sistema, madalas na pagkakamali at hindi pagkakaintindihan. Upang maiwasan ang mga ito, kailangan maisagawa ang mga sumusunod. Siyempre po, dapat may briefing. Uh, kailangan aware din po si lahat ng personnel regarding the plan. Next is team talks. So, uh, next is the procedure upda updates. Next is the monitoring systems. Next is the testing to ensure competency. So, kung meron pong positive regarding the uh, implementation of the HACCP system into the workplace, meron naman pong failure in implementing halal HACCP. So, poor hygiene practices, this is the one of the prerequisites in implementing uh, the halal HACCP plan. So, liban po sa mga hindi pagsunod ng proper personal hygiene, kung isa po tayong employee, halimbawa ako ay non-Muslim at may, al may alaga akong aso or any haram animals, ay hindi muna ako dapat makipag-contact dito hanggat may kasalukuyang production. So, according to Dr. Rafik, uh, even yung uh, cat ay hindi mo, hindi mo muna siya... Uh, Uh, wala mo na kayong contact with that to avoid dinages or for safety purposes po siya. Next is the lack of management commitment. Next is the lack of knowledge or training. Yun po yung kanina. Kalimbawa, kung wala, bigla ka na lang sumabak at wala kang training, so possible po na ma-fulfill yung implementation ng halal hasip. Next is the poor re records or too much paperwork. So, dapat everything must be organized before the implementation of the halal hasip. Next is the system sits in manager's office. Next is too many critical control points. So, dapat po ma-avoid natin yung maraming critical control points sa ating HACCP system. Next is unreliable critical limits. So, why halal hasip emerge? So, Muslims are under a duty only to consume food, pharmaceutical, nutrients, and cosmetics products that are halal and tayib. So, when we say tayib, this is the wholesomeness of the uh, food or non-food products. So, by introducing a fourth religious element to microbial, chemical, or physical elements found in sec secular hasip, An additional layer of regulation and protection is afforded for those wishing to consume halal food and products. So, it emerged since early 2000, Malaysian food export industries have recognized the demand for food compliant with Islamic dietary low or halal with primary consumer choices based on quality and safety. So the lack of documented monitoring for health hazard and harm substances led to the withdrawal of certification. The HACCP-based halal quality assurance standards were developed as a result using the HACCP criteria for safety religious dietary requirement and quality. So next is the halal critical control point are identified using HACCP criteria and a question three on halal proce uh, processing and storage. So the, uh, the question three on halal uh, would be tackled po mamaya uh, with the second speaker. So, the hazard analysis and critical control point uh, or HACCP in relation to halal. So, ano ba ang relasyon ni critic, uh, hazard analysis critical control point to halal? 
So first is potential hazard may arise from taking non-halal processing steps on or from the use or suspected use of haram or non tayib or unwholesome ingredients in the preparation of the halal foods. So hasip shall be compatible with the religious requirements of Sharia, Sharia law. So according to Halal Science Center's Chulalongkorn University, it integrates halal standards and hasip and also offers a guideline and best practices for halal food manufacturing and also used for analysis, prevention, and monitoring Islamic prohibited items or haram. So in addition of physical, biological, and chemical hazard critical control point in halal food manufacturing. So required GMP approval prior to the enrollment of halal hasip. So the comparison naman po between the halal and hasip, both employ good manufacturing practices and good hygiene practice. Next is the preventive in nature, based on holistic approach, not and, and not stand alone. Uh, next is the microbial, chemical, and physical contaminants, controlled processes, sanitized environment, and safe inputs. Last is the healthy employees. So here's the benefits of halal hasib. So systematic approach po siya, preventive system, na increase yung confidence and the effective use of resources, cost-effective control system, helps demonstrate due diligence, strengthen quality management system, product quality dividend, facilitate regulatory or customer inspection. So, in consumer and or customer benefits, it reduces risk of foodborne diseases, increase awareness of basic hygiene, increase confidence in the food supply, and improve quality of life. For the industry or the company, so it increased consumer, consumer and or government confidence. It reduced legal and insurance cost and increased the market access and the reduction in the production cost or reduced wasted of food. Also improved the product consistency, improved staff management commitment to food safety, or better staff organization or use of the time. Staff have clearer ideas of food safety requirements and practices, and the production of safer food decreased business risk. And for the government, it improves public health or reduce health care costs. It facilitates food safety inspection or more efficient and targeted food control. It facilitates international trade. It increases confidence of the community in the food supply. So remember, halal hasip does not stand alone. The application of the halal hasip does not stand alone in the food processing facility. The plan must be built on other food safety programs those are the application of good, good manufacturing practices. Those are practiced by the processing facility that support halal hasip plan and will address food safety and food quality issues that are not critical for the red reduction of food safety hazard and also establishment of sanitation standard operating procedure so are required in federally inspected meat and poultry operation and address procedure for clean facilities, equipment, and personnel that are necessary for all products produced in a facility. So the followings that are used for a reference in this topic for your information. So that's all. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Syukran or thank you and maraming salamat po sa inyo sa inyong lahat. Thank you so much, Ma'am Noraisa, for that informative presentation. Indeed, the HACCP is very important when it comes to food safety. Okay, let me check first our participants. We have 327 participants from Facebook and 337 from YouTube. We would like also to acknowledge the presence of Dr. Rafik Saleh, Executive Director, Halal Consultant, and Dr. Adita Shre Prabakfasuma. They are watching from Malaysia po. Assalamu alaikum, sir and ma'am. Oh, so sending block love from the Philippines to yours, po. Okay, without further ado, let's proceed to our second resource speaker. She is a science research specialist, one at product development section, food processing division, DUST ITDI. A graduate of bachelor in technical science. teacher education, major in food technology at Sultan Kudarat State University, Isulan Sultan Kudarat. She is also a licensed professional teacher. Her topic is about halal. Uh, oh, her topic is about application of halal hazard analysis control points or HACCP. Help me welcome Ms. Almeda Billy Dasan. Thank you, Ms. Klang. Assalamu alaikum. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. So today we will talk about the application of halal based on the suggested HACCP system. So we are all aware that HACCP uses seven principles to analyze any food operation with the identification of potential hazards of its three categories, such as the microbial, chemical, and physical in its different manufacturing steps with the application of inspection and control measures of low cost for the purpose of having safe and hygienic food. So since its establishment, an additional fourth hazard has drawn the attention of Muslim scientists. That is of religious nature. The hazard of the use of non-halal processing systems or the presence of haram, najis, mashbu, makru, or non taib materials in the final product. So here are the outline of my topic. So we will discuss the halal team, the halal product description, uh, how to identify intended use, construct process flow diagram, on-site process flow confirmation and verification, and the seven principles of halal HACCP. And last one is the conclusion. So before we proceed to the seven principles of halal HACCP, so there are five preliminary steps that we must do first. So task one, the halal team. So sino-sino po ba ang pwedeng maging parte ng halal team? So sila yung mga individual na may sapat na kaalaman tungkol sa Islamic dietary law o yung Sharia law. So ibig sabihin, alam nila kung ano ang halal o yung mga pagkaing ipinahihintulot Halam din nila ang haram o yung mga pagkaing ipinagbabawal or unlawful at alam din nila yung mga pagkaing nakakaduda or doubtful o yung tinatawag nating mashbu. At bukod doon, alam din nila ang iba't ibang classification ng najis o dumi. Bukod doon, mayroon din itong kaalaman tungkol sa food safety. So marunong po itong mag-handle, mag-prepare at mag-store ng pagkain in a way po na mapiprevent yung tinatawag nating foodborne illness at iba't ibang food hazards na maaaring makapag ng harm sa ating pagkain. So bakit po kailangan natin bumuo ng halal team? So kailangan natin bumuo ng halal team upang maging successful ang ating halal hasi plan. So the halal team is responsible for developing implementing and maintaining the halal HACCP system. So, kailangan yung halal team ay ibibigay nila ang kanilang effort and should not be left the sole responsibility of one person. And this halal team should know how the food products are produced, what could go wrong, and or what has gone wrong, 
And they also know what to do if something does go wrong. So ngayon po, kailangan po ba na Muslim lahat ang mapabilang sa halal team? So hindi naman po necessary na lahat Muslim. As long as may Muslim po na may sapat na kaalaman tungkol sa Sharia law. At syempre kapag may Muslim po, masisigurado natin ang tinatawag na halal integrity o assurance na ang produkto natin ay 100% halal. At kapag natapos na po natin ang pagbuo ng halal team, di halal team naman po ay gagawa ng halal product description. So ano po ba ang nilalaman ng halal product description? So first, yung product details, ingredients, packaging and labeling requirement, storage condition, and the shelf life of the product. So, here is the example of what we did in the halal banana chips. So, as you can see, nariyan po ang brief description about the halal banana chips. So, the ingredients, the packaging, uh, storage condition, and the shelf life of the product. So, the ingredients must be halal certified or halal compliant. Sa packaging po, uh, na, uh, nasabi po dyan kung ano po yung gagamitin na packaging. And then, packaging material must be halal compliant. Uh, how do we know if a packaging is halal certified? So, malalaman lang po natin kung yung packaging ba ay halal certified based on its traceability or its origin. Kasi some packaging materials are made from recyclable material and hindi natin alam kung yung materials ba na na-recycle ay pinaggamitan sa non-halal products before. At kapag tapos na ang halal team sa paggawa ng kanilang halal product description, ang susunod naman nilang gagawin ay ang pag-identify ng intended use ng kanilang product. So, nariyan po yung usage of the food, kung para kanino o para saan ang ating produkto. And target consumer, kung sino ang nat nais nating consumer ng ating produkto. So, ito po ang example natin sa halal banana chips. Intended use, the banana chips can be used and eaten as is a snack food. And the target consumer, uh, the product can be consumed by young and old alike as snack food. So after uh, identifying the intended use of our product, the next thing to do is to construct the process flow diagram. So what is a process flow diagram? So it consists of every aspect or activity of a production process in making a product. So, dito nakasaad ang pagkasunod-sunod po ng ating process. So, for example, kung sa banana chips po, ito po yung ating sample process flow diagram. From receiving, sorting, washing and sanitizing, peeling, slicing, deep frying, draining, cooling, packing and storing. So, please take note that process flow diagram may vary by processing line. So, after the task 4, uh, yung nagawa naman po na process flow diagram ng halal team ay kailangang i-verify at i-confirm kung tama ba yung nagawa nila. So, paano po ba natin i-verify? So, yan po ang kanilang next task. On-site process flow confirmation and verification. So, Adolfo and Alfonso 2009 defined on-site confirmation as walking the line to verify that all steps, controls, and activities are in place. So, for example, yung halal team po ay pupunta sa kanilang processing plant or processing facility to check and confirm and verify if the process of uh, flow diagram they constructed are correct. So, yun po ang five preliminary steps. So, ngayon, kapag natapos na ng halal team gawin ang limang preliminary steps, 
ang susunod na, ang susunod nilang gagawin ay ang pag-apply ng pitong principles ng halal hasip. So, una-una po dyan yung principle 1, to conduct a hazard and haram substances analysis. So, the halal team should identify and list potential hazards and potential haram substances that may likely occur in the production of the product. So, ano-ano po ba yung mga potential hazards? So, mayroong physical, chemical hazards, and biological hazards. So, ano naman po ba yung mga potential haram substances? Pwedeng maging na G's, presence of non-halal items, and haram derivatives. So, narito po ang example ng potential hazard at haram substances. So, nariyan po ang um, biological hazards tulad ng bacteria, viruses, parasites, and molds. Sa chemical hazards naman po, yung pesticides, processing chemicals, drug residue, allergen, and sa physical hazards, mayroon pong physical hazards na naturally present sa foods. For example, yung bones, pits, and bugs. And meron namang pong physical hazards na makukuha during handling and processing. Katulad po ng glass, metal, hair, and other foreign matters. So what should the halal team do when conducting a hazard and haram substance analysis? So the halal team should consider the likely presence of the hazards in the raw materials. So, whether the hazard may be introduced during a process step and potential survival or increase of a hazard at a process. So, in addition to this, the halal team should also be aware of the haram substances or potential religious hazards that can be tolerated and cannot be tolerated. So, ibig sabihin, may mga haram substances na pwedeng itolerate may halal subs, uh, haram substances din po or potential religious hazards na cannot be tolerated. So, ano po ba yung mga example ng potential religious hazards na hindi pwedeng itolerate? So, unang-una po dyan is yung presence of meat, fat, or gelatin, or any parts of the pig. Second is the presence of gush blood in a manufactured product. And then, presence of byproducts of insects or non-halal slaughtered animal. So, ano naman po yung mga potential religious hazards na pwede naman pong itolerate? For example, in some schools, forgetting authoring the name of Allah at the time of slaughter. Kasi may nangyayari na yung nagsislaughter is sa niya or intention na lang niya. So, hindi niya lang literal na nababanggit ang pangalan ni Allah, subalit isinasa puso niya na lamang ito. So, ito po yung example natin sa pagkandak ng hazard at haram substances analysis sa halal banana chips. So, ganito po ang gagawin ng halal team. They will make a list of potential hazards and potential haram substances that may likely occur per processing step. So, for example, so receiving of raw materials, ang potential hazards po dyan is yung bacteria on raw materials. So, baka po yung raw materials ay nagkaroon ng contamination prior to arrival. And then, the residue of chemicals and foreign particles such as soil, metal, hair, and etc. due to improper handling. Sa potential haram substance naman po, baka po may possible na G's or haram content or substance, haram substance in the raw materials or yung ingredients. Kaya kailangan na i-double check natin yung ating supplier kung halal certified ba ito o hindi. So pareho lang din po sa remaining processing step, kailangan i-identify yung mga potential hazards and haram substances that may likely occur. So, uh, after conducting a hazard analysis and a haram substances analysis, 
So ito po ang susunod na gagawin ng halal team. Yung principle number two, determination of critical control point and halal critical control point. So ano po ba ang critical control point? Critical control point is a step at which control can be applied and is essential to prevent or eliminate a food safety hazard to or reduce it to an acceptable level. So ano naman po yung halal critical control point? So halal critical control point is a point or step or procedure in halal food manufacturing at which control can be applied and as a result, halal food cross-contamination hazard can be prevented or eliminated. So to determine the critical control point and halal critical control point, mayroong general decision tree na ginagamit to help the halal team confirm whether the hazard needs more food safety control and support the judgment of the team. So this is the HACCP General Decision Tree. So it has four questions that may help the team in identifying the critical control point of each processing step. So for example, in receiving of raw material, so the first question that halal team should answer is if that processing step has a hazard. Kasi kung wala, it is not a critical control point. But if yes, proceed to question number one. So question number one, do preventive measures exist at this step? So for example, so receiving of raw material, uh, do preventive measures exist at this step? If no, uh, is control at this step necessary for safety? So if no pa rin po, it is not a critical control point, so pwede na pong mag-stop. So if yes naman po, um, kailangan pong i-modify ang process natin or product. Ibig sabihin, kailangan uh, may babaguhin or i-improve. So kung yes naman po ang sagot sa question number one na may preventive control measure na nag exist proceed to question number two. So question number two is the step specifically designed to eliminate or reduce the likely occurrence of the hazard to an acceptable level. So for example, letting sa receiving of raw materials, yung step po ba na iyon is specifically designed to eliminate or reduce the likely occurrence of the hazard to an acceptable level. So if yes, um, it is automatically a critical control point. If no naman po, proceed to question number three. Could contamination with identified hazards occur in excess of acceptable levels or could this increase to an acceptable levels? So if no, um, it is not a critical control point, so pwede na pong mag-stop. So if yes, proceed to question number four. Will a subsequent step eliminate identified hazards or reduce likely occurrence to acceptable level. Ibig sabihin, um, meron pa bang susunod na step na maaring maka-eliminate or prevent o mabawasan ng maaring pagkakaroon ng hazards? Kung yes, it is not a critical control point, so stop. So if no, it is a critical control point. So yun po yung HACCP General Decision Tree. So ngayon, since it is a halal HACCP system, so narito naman po ang halal critical control point decision tree for ingredients and process control. So to identify the halal critical control point, uh, it has a seven questions that may help the halal team in identifying the halal critical control point. So this halal critical control point decision tree is developed based on the guide spell on Malaysia Halal Standard or the MS 1500-2009. So for example, uh, receiving of raw materials. So question number one, do all product raw materials have halal certification? 
So, lahat po ba ng raw materials na gagamitin ay halal certified? So, if yes, proceed to question number two. Question number two, is there any possibility for cross-contamination of haram substance? So, yun bang uh, product natin na halal certified, may posibilidad ba na magka-cross-contamination sa haram substance? If yes, it is automatically a halal critical control point. So, kailangan upon receiving of raw materials, uh, kailangan ma-prevent na o ma-eliminate o ma-reduce ang pagkakaroon ng uh, haram substance. So, make sure lang natin na si supplier ay halal certified and his or her area is far from any najis and haram substances. And aside from that, uh, yung transportation, make sure lang na walang haram substances sa vehicle na gagamitin. And sa receiving area natin ay uh, solely for halal product only. So if no naman po ang sagot natin sa question number two, it is not a halal critical control point, so pwede na pong mag-stop. So ngayon, babalikan po natin yung question number one. Yung do all product ma raw materials have halal certification. Ngayon, kung hindi naman po lahat ng ating raw materials ay halal certified, proceed to question number three. So, are the non-certified products are being used in the process? So, may non-certified products ba na gagamitin sa process? So, if yes, unable to certify. Ibig sabihin, hindi na maa-assure na ang product natin ay Halal compliant. If no naman po, uh, wala namang pong uh, gagamitin na non-certified products during the process, proceed to question number four. Question number four, do the materials contain any haram substances? Um, yung mga materials po ba yung non-certified products ay may haram substance? Kasi may nangyayari na although hindi naman siya halal certified yung isang product, ay wala naman siyang any haram content. So, uh, pero kung mayroong haram content, it is unable to certify. So, hindi pa rin masi-certify na halal compliant. So, ngayon, uh, proceed to question number five. Kung no po ang sagot natin sa question number four, Proceed to question number five. So, question number five, is there a specific production line and storage area for certified and non-certified process and ingredients clearly dedicated? So, ibig sabihin, kung mayroon po bang specific processing area na dedicated lang po para sa na-certified and non-certified na process, O kung yun bang certified ingredients natin ay may dedicated area. So, ganun din sa non-certified. If yes, meron din siyang uh, bawat isa ay mayroong dedicated area, it is not a halal critical control point. So, pwede na pong mag-stop. If no, proceed to question number six. Could the sanitation procedure able to eliminate the fat, the smell, color and taste or yung tinatawag na diba so diba is another uh, is it is also a certu other term for certu meaning it is a ritual cleansing so makakaya po ba ng certu ma-eliminate yung fat yung smell yung color and taste if ever na wala pong dedicated area ibig sabihin nasa isang lugar lang po ba nasa isang lugar po si halal at uh, non-halal product if no, unable to certify but actually makakaya din naman po ng certo unless the person performing the certo is not that expert so paano po ba ginagawa yung certo so unang una po uh, ano po yung tinatawag nating certo certo is a ritual cleansing performed by Muslims when they come into contact with items considered ritually unclean. So, um, the process of certu is to cleanse the affected area or parts seven times where one wash using mutlak water. Mutlak water means uh, 
it is the water that has not been in contact or in use. So, for example, po ng mutlak water is yung sa river, wells, rainwater, sea water, melted snow, spring water, and tap water with soil po. So, the condition of soil must be free from najis and non-mustakmal, meaning the soil which had been used for dry ablution. So, um, and six washes with mutlak water. So, cleansing process guidelines stated in uh, MS 2400-2010 standards as follow. So, it is required to wash seven times, one of which shall be water mixed with salt. So, ito po yung sa serto. So, the first wash shall be to clear the existence of najis even if a few washes are needed. And the water from first cleansing shall not remain behind and the next wash shall be counted as the second wash. And the amount of soil used is just enough to make a suspension and the usage of cleansing agent containing soil is permitted. And if the process shall also include controlling the flow and discharge of the cleansing and rinsing water into proper drainage and drain. So, yun po yung ser to. So, kailangan po, uh, yung personal, personal natin ay marunong pong mag ser to. Ngayon, sa question number 6, if yes po ang sagot natin, makakaya po siya ng ser to, mayroon pa rin po bang uh, posibleng or potential cross-contamination of haram substances? So, if no, it is not a halal critical control point. If yes, kung mayroon pa rin talagang potential haram uh, cross-contamination, then unable to certify. Ibig sabihin, uh, hindi talaga tayo makakasunod sa tinatawag na halal compliant. So, paano po ba tayo magdedetermine ng critical control point and halal critical control point? So, una, yung sa uh, critical control point, um, uh, unahin po muna natin yung sa halal critical control point. So, for example po sa production po ng banana chips. So, let's say, um, since kasi sa amin, sa bana paggawa po ng banana chips, lahat po all raw materials, processing facility, and then processing tools and equipment are all halal certified and halal compliant. So, we don't have a halal critical control point. So, what if there is a halal critical control point? So, for example, in the processing of banana chips. So, um, babalikan po natin yung decision tree ng halal critical control point. So, as you can see, uh, this is only where there is a halal critical control point sa question number Two. So, sa tingin nyo po, anong processing step po natin maiiwasan ng possible cross-contamination of haram substances or na GIS kung iyon po ang na-identify na potential haram substance during the task 1. So, maiiwasan natin ang possible cross-contamination of haram substances upon receiving of raw material. By how? So, paano po? So, upon receiving the raw material, Kailangan i-make sure na po natin na una yung supplier natin ay halal certified or halal compliant. Kasi doon po posibleng manggaling sa supplier ang possible na gist or haram substance. Pangalawa po yung transportation. So make sure lang po that the vehicle to be used was not used in transporting non-halal products. Para po masigurado po talaga natin na wala po talagang any haram substances. Pangatlo, dapat po yung receiving area and the storage room is solely for halal products only. Kaya nga po, um, kung mapapansin nyo po sa decision tree, dito pa lang, dito lang po talaga yung halal critical control point. Kasi uh, pag sa umpisa pa lang lahat po ng raw material natin, yung tools and equipment, and the processing area is halal compliant na po or halal certified. So, wala na pong magiging problema. Ang babantayan na lang po dyan ay yung posibleng pagpasok ng ibang najis. 
So, ngayon naman po, paano pag critical control point? So, um, ang critical control point is usually located at step where you can prevent, eliminate, or reduce the likely occurrence of uh, potential hazard. So, for example, sa banana chips, so ang na-identify natin critical control point ay yung sa deep, deep frying. Kasi, uh, let's say, among the processing step of halal banana chips, sa deep frying is the identified CCP because that is where we could prevent, eliminate, or reduce the likely occurrence of possible microbial growth. So, any haram substance will be considered a breach of compliance with Islamic dietary law. So, ibig sabihin po kapag po may makitang haram substance, ay isa na pong paglabag sa Islamic dietary law. Kaya dapat sa umpisa pa lamang po, i-make sure na po natin na lahat ng ingredients po natin, raw materials, tools and equipment na gagamitin ay halal certified and halal compliant, pati na rin po yung processing uh, area po natin. So ngayon, after determining the critical control point and the halal critical control point, ang isusunod po nating gagawin or ng halal team na gagawin ay ang pag establish ng critical limit base sa na-identify nating uh, critical control point at halal critical control point. So critical limit means a maximum or minimum value to which a biological, chemical, or physical parameter must be controlled at a critical control point to prevent, eliminate, or reduce to an acceptable level the occurrence of a food safety hazard. So, for example, yung na-identify natin critical control points sa kanina sa halal banana chips, so mag establish tayo ng critical limit. So, ang ating critical limit for deep frying uh, at temperature of 175 degrees Celsius at 2 minutes using pressurized gas range to prevent, eliminate, and reduce the likely occurrence of microbial growth in the food. So now, paano naman po sa halal? How do we set our halal critical limit? So, first po is yung halal certificate. So, kailangan ng supplier natin ay halal certified and halal compliant. The receiving area is solely for halal products only to prevent the cross-contamination of haram substances. And the tools and equipment, uh, make sure lang po natin na it is for halal food processing only. Now, after, uh, establishing critical limits at every CCP and HCCP, gives your staff a strict, easy-to-follow guidelines to help them understand how to keep a food safe. So now, after establishing your critical limit, ang susunod na gagawin naman ng halal team is to establish a monitoring procedure. So kailangan nilang i-monitor yung naset nilang critical limit. So for example, yung kanina sa uh, critical limit natin sa banana chips, i-monitor po nila na yung temperature po is 175 degrees Celsius at yung time lamang po ay 2 minutes. So ngayon, paano naman po natin i-monitor ang naset nating halal critical limit? For example, kanina yung nasabi natin na halal critical limit natin ay halal certification. So i-monitor natin kung updated pa rin ba ang certificate ni supplier o ini-implement pa rin ba niya ang pagiging halal compliant. Kasi doon nakasalalay sa kanya ang pagiging halal compliant naman ng ating product. So, next is tools and equipment. So, dapat imomonitor din natin ito kasi baka po nagamit pala ito sa non-halal products o baka may biglang uh, na -gis. So, after monitoring your critical limit, for example naman po, kung hindi po yun nasunod, mag establish naman po tayo ng corrective actions. So, for example, sa critical limit ng banana chips, kapag hindi po nasunod, yung 175 degrees Celsius na temperature at 2 minutes. So, ang ating corrective action is make sure lang na to follow the standardized process 
and apply double checking at kung kinakailangan ay personal training. So how about in halal critical limit? So for example, if supplier failed to show or if ever na hindi man na rin yung kanyang halal certificate, so pwede tayong humanap ng ibang supplier na halal certified. Kaya po, in every raw material, dapat po may dalawa, tatlong supplier para po in case na yung isa ay hindi pa po uh, nare-renew yung halal certificate niya po, ay may mapagkukuhanan po tayo ng product na certified halal. And next po, for example, yung sa tools and equipment. So, paano po kung may biglang na gis o nagamit po pala siya sa non-halal products? So, kailangan po siyang isertu. So, after establishing your corrective actions, Next na gagawin ng halal team is to verify the HACCP plan, halal HACCP plan. So, kailangan i-verify ng halal team kung yun bang na-develop nilang halal HACCP plan ay makakapag-produce ba ng safe and halal food at nag-work ba to to control uh, hazards and haram substances. So, the importance of also uh, verifying the HACCP plan is to make sure kung yung halal HACCP plan po ba natin ay practically place its functional and effective role as planned. And also, to determine whether yung halal HACCP plan ba na inadapt natin ay kailangan pang i-improve o kailangan may itama pa doon. And uh, lastly, Principle 7 is the record keeping. So, documentation allows for effective control without redundancy and are easily referenced. So, it is important that all must be documented and recorded to avoid redundancy para hindi na po paulit-ulit at para sa next production, mayroon ng basihan para maiwasan ang pagkakaroon ng parehong sitwasyon o pangyayari sa kada production. Last, the conclusion. So we can see that halal can be also incorporated in the HACCP system. And to manufacturers, producers, it builds the confidence to their products as their product is not just safe and of quality, but it is also halal compliant. Uh, halal characteristics complement the HACCP system, so providing an additional layer of protection for consumers Together, they provide a complete system for analyzing any food operation to identify potential hazards within the three traditional categories, such as the microbial, chemical, and physical. So by introducing a fourth religious element to the microbial, chemical, or physical elements found in secular HACCP, an additional layer of regulation and protection is afforded for those wishing to consume halal food uh, end products. At dyan na po natatapos ang aking topic. Shukran, thank you for listening at sana po ay may natutunan po kayo. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Almeda, sa napakagandang presentation, pagpapaliwanag ng Halal Hasep. Indeed, Halal Hasep is important because it prioritizes and controls potential hazard in food production. Uh, to our Facebook and YouTube participants, you may now drop your questions dahil magkakaroon po muna tayo ng 10 minutes break. Shukran! Tumitilaot na ang manok, hudyat na ng pagpasok. Paglilingkod na walang kapalit sa bayan ng aming hati. Tara na, kaibigan, huwag kang magpaiwan. Gamitin ang dunong bansa'y susulong. Ating abutin ang pangarap ni Juan sa pamangkakas.
anong mang hangon ay haharapin Mahirap man ay kakayanin Sa pinagsamang lakas at galing Tagumpay ay mararating Tara na, kaibigan Huwag kang magpaiwan Gamitin ang dunong bansa ay susunod At ikabutin ang pangarap iwan Sa pamamagitan na maghang Ang kaunlaran ay makakamtan Kung lahat magtutulungan Tara na, sama-sama Itaguyod ang siyensya Maayos na bukas para sa Pilipinas Ating abutin ang pangarap iwan Sa pamamagitan ng magham Ang kaunlaran ay makakamtan Kung lahat magtutulungan Tara na, sama-sama Itaguyod ang siyensya Maayos na bukas para sa Pilipinas Pangarap kong magkaroon ng mabilis at murang transportasyon para sa lahat. Pangarap kong masagot ang malnutrition. Pangarap ko pong magkaroon ng effective communication means for emergency. Pangarap kong ma-maximize yung renewable energy source and to reduce the carbon dioxide emission. Pangarap ko pong maging scientist. Yung daot simula na Humanda sabay-sabay akyat Hawak kamay tayo'y ang ating lipat Lipat Ating nabutin ang pangarap iwan Sa pamamagitan ng maghag Ang kaunlaran ay makagamtan Kung lahat magtutulungan Sa pamamagitan na nagha Ang kaunlaran ay makakamutan Ang lahat pagtulungan Tara na, sama-sama Itaguyod ang siyensya Maalis na bukas para sa Pilipinas Maalis na bukas para sa Pilipinas Ayos na bukas sa pinipalanan sa bayang Pilipinas. Ating abutin ang pangarap iwan sa pamamagitan na naghahap ang kaunlaran ay makakamta.
So, let's now proceed to quiz question and answer portion. Uh, questions will be answered by our resource speaker. So, let's have the first question. Uh, galing po ito kay Ma'am Jocelyn Leonardo from our Facebook participant. Basically, HACCP of FMS is the same as the halal HACCP, except for those use of haram materials. Am I right? And sasagutin po ito ni Ma'am Noraisa. Okay, thank you, Miss Arlene. So, so sa question ni Miss Jocelyn Leonardo, almost same lang po sila. Kailangan lang pong idagdag ang halal component. So, kaya po kailangan lang po na maging aware tayo, what are those halal and what are those haram? Thank you po. Okay, thank you so much po, Ma'am Noraisa. Let's proceed to the second question and galing po sa ating Facebook participant from Ms. Mr. Johnny Val Vaporoso and Vaporoso Bacalondo and Ms. Rona Martin. So this is the question. This product that undergo fumigation, is it halal or haram? Or is it necessary to secure halal certification for fumigants? We would like to ask po if cleaning solution like chlorine should have a halal certificate or enough na po ba yung company mismo ay halal certified? This will be answered by Ms. By Ms. Almeda po. 
So, uh, dun po sa question, uh, as long as na yung ginamit po is halal certified. Thank you po. Okay, thank you so much, Miss Almeda. So, let's proceed to the third question. Galing po kay uh, Sir Rasid Sabdani from our YouTube participants. Uh, how about using haram products in medical purposes, ma'am? Tolerable po ba siya? Sasagutin po ni Sir Ads. Okay. How about using haram products in medical purposes? Is it tolerable? Okay po. Uh, basically, uh, ayon sa ating Sharia law, ay mayroon po tayong tinatawag na uh, mushab o mashbo, which is uh, totally haram. Katulad po nun, example po nito ay ang marijuana po. Uh, mayroon po tayong medication na nakaprobahan, which is ang marijuana po ay pwede pong ipanggamot. Pero ayon po sa ating sharia, ito, ito po ay legitima, legitimately na prohibited po. Uh, dahil napasok po siya sa mashbo. So, yun lamang po ng thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Adsmi. So, let's proceed to the fourth question. And galing po sa ating YouTube participant from Music Rhythm and Chords by Ma'am Josephine Arellano. Magkano po magpa-certified ng halal certification? For small or big scale production ba? Parehas lang? Ma'am Noraisa. Thank you, Ms. Klang. So, regarding naman po sa amount or fee for halal certification, ito po ay nakadepende po sa halal certifying body dahil po iba-iba uh, rin po yung amount uh, from them. So, mayroong package na po siya at mayroon din pong specific product po. So, better uh, po na we recommend you to visit their uh, website of that uh, halal certifying body. Uh, usually po, pwede nyo pong, di naman pong i-research sa pub po, meron pong list of halal certifying body po dito sa Pilipinas. Thank you po. Okay, thank you so much, Ma'am Naraisa. So let's proceed to the next question. Galing po kay Ma'am Rachel Joyce Lambon from our YouTube participants. If ever po di galawin ng PH distributor ang totally sealed from the raw material manufactured to be delivered to the final user, should we still separate it from not halal during delivery? Sasagutin po ni Ms. Almeda. So, thank you po sa tanong na iyan. So, in terms naman po sa transportation and distribution, may tinatawag po tayong halal logistic, which means uh, the main objective po ng halal logistic is to ensure the halal integrity of halal products for the end use consumers. Kaya po yung halal logistic natin plays a crucial role po sa halal supply chain management. Kasi uh, this connects the individual suppliers, the suppliers of suppliers, customers of customers, to the final customers. Thank you po. Thank you so much, Miss Almeda. Um, next question is from our YouTube participant by Ma'am Abby Rose Baria. So this is the question. Distribution and transportation of halal products should be separated from non-halal products. How about the stores? Should be separated from non-halal products din po ba? How can you monitor it? This question is intended for Ms. Almeda, I think. So, of course po, gaya po nang nasabi kanina, so, kailangan po natin ma-maintain yung halal integrity na tinatawag natin sa halal products. So, kung gusto po natin na ma-assure na yung product po natin ay 100% halal, so, dapat po i-separate po natin siya sa non-halal products. So, kung sa store, uh, sa isang store po siya, wag po natin silang pagtabihin kasi malay po uh, magkamali rin po yung ating customer sa pagkuha makuha niya rin po yung non-halal products and how can you monitor it po uh, ganun lang din po separation lang po ang gagawin 
Thank you po. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Almeda. So, let's now proceed to the next question. Galing po kay Sir Jojo Aquino, one of our uh, project cooperators sa Halal Food Ingredients. Ito po yung question niya. Hi, planning to establish a chili powder production, but not quite sure if my suppliers are halal certified. Is it just safe for me to have my own chilies planted to assure compliance? And sasagutin po ito ni Ms. Noraisa. Thank you, Ms. Arlene. So, sa question po ni Sir Jojo Aquino, uh, planning to establish a chili powder production but not quite sure if my suppliers are halal certified. Is it just safe for me to have my own chilies planted to assure, assure compliance? So, in that case po, sir, uh, better yung kayo mismo, uh, mayroon po kayong chili planted. But uh, make it sure po na malayo po kayo sa mga haram, anima, uh, pigiri, yung ganun po, for example, yun. Kasi po magkukos po siya ng contamination for haram. And which is haram po. Thank you po. Thank you so much po, Ma'am Noraisa. Let's proceed to the next question from our YouTube participant by Ma'am Justine Camille Castillo. So, this is the question. Is it necessary for the personnel performing CERTO to be Muslim? So, this question will be answered by Sir Adsmi. Is it necessary for the personnel performing CERTO? Is it necessary for the personnel performing CERTO to be Muslim? Okay, um... The terminology, um, CERTO, what um, explanation po para sa CERTO terminology po? Okay, is it necessary for the personnel performing CERTO to be a Muslim? Okay. Uh, just to ensure na malinis po ang ating uh, pagkain, um, hindi na po kinakailangan maging spirit, spiritual o magkakaroon ng spiritual na paglilinis. No? Dahil po ang pagkain ay nag-uumpisa po ito sa pagkatay at naayon po doon sa kung maayos po ang pagkatay nito ay Ito po siya ay halal po sa atin, no? Uh, ang serto ay isang uh, ritual explanation which is kailangan po ng religious na pamamaraan which is uh, hindi na po ito kailangan para maging certified pa po na malinis ang ating produkto. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, uh, Sir Adsmi. So, let's now proceed to the next question from our Facebook participant, uh, Sir or Ma'am Ken Lim and Ma'am Isgera Joy. If the suppliers have no halal certificate but they claim to be halal compliant only, how can we verify the supplier claim without the halal certificate document? What if the supplier can't provide the halal the halal certificate or material. Pwede po ba ang halal statement from them? Sasagutin po ito ni uh, Ma'am Noraisa. Um, so regarding for that question, kapag po ay si supplier ay hindi maka-provide ng halal certificate for a certain material. So, it must be uh, siguraduhin lang po na halal compliant po ito at meron po silang maibigay na origin of documents or makagarantee na this is halal compliant. Thank you po. Thank you very much, Ma'am Noraisa. So, let's proceed to question number 10. 
from our YouTube participant and tanong po ito ni Mr. Raymond Maybuena. So this is the question. In Hanal Hasip Decision 3, for the portions regarded as unable to certify, would that mean that facility would outrightly be ineligible for halal certification? Okay. So, sabi daw, um, yun. So, would that mean po ba na yung facility would outrightly be ineligible of halal certification? Yes po. Um, hindi po siya magiging eligible halal certified kung uh, yung sa ating facility ay may mga unable to certify. For example, may mga presence of nudges and haram po. Thank you po. Thank you so much, Ms. Almeda. So let's proceed to the next question. Galing po kay Ma'am Elianer from our Facebook uh, participant. So here's the question. Can you please give us an example on how we can monitor possibilities of haram during transit while the product is located in the vehicle? As of now, our receiving form has its control for pest, dirt, and possible intentional intrusion. Are those control enough? And sasagutin po ulit ni Ms. Almeda. So how can you monitor po the possibility of haram during transit? So, syempre po, uh, yung gagamitin nating vehicle is only for halal only, halal products lang po. And then, araw-araw po, ito double check po natin kung may mga any presence of haram substances po doon. And kailangan po din natin siyang uh, linisin din po to prevent the uh, presence of haram substance. Thank you po. Thank you very much, Ms. Almeda. Let's proceed to the next question from our Facebook uh, participant by Mr. Rons Romero. So here is the question. So what is the minimum number of Muslim personnel in a HACCP team? Will be answered by Ma'am Almeda again. Or Ma'am Noraisa, I should say. Thank you, Ms. Klang. So, the minimum number of the uh, member of the HACCP team uh, would be maximum of two Muslim. Okay, thank you so much, Ma'am Naraisa. So, let's proceed to the next question. Galing po kay Ken Lim. And RL Negaska from our Facebook participant. Here's the question. On establishing a halal HACCP system, is it necessary to have a halal consultant if we do not have at least one Muslim employee? Or if there is a Muslim employee in our HACCP team, then is it okay for us to proceed with halal HACCP without a halal consultant? Is it okay to hire a consultant to prepare the halal HACCP plan and oversee the implementation at the enterprise level? How much is the cost? Sagutin po ni Ms. Almeda. So, in establishing po of halal HACCP system, so kung wala po uh, kayong at least one Muslim employee, pwede po kayong kumuha ng halal consultant para mas mag-guide po kayo kung ano po yung mga dapat nyo gagawin pag uh, nag up uh, gagawa po kayo ng halal HACCP system and if there is a Muslim employee in our HACCP system so pwede rin po naman kayong mag proceed sa paggawa ng halal HACCP system as long as yung Muslim employee nyo is knowledgeable din po in terms of uh, Sharia law o yung Islamic dietary law so about the cost naman po sa halal consultant so, depende po yan sa mapipili mo halal consultant. Thank you po. Thank you very much again, Ms. Almeda. So, let's proceed to the number 14 question um, asked by Ms. Nancy D. Guzman from our Facebook participant. So, here is the question. Can we not use the SSOP in the cleaning which is verified by ATP test and microtest? 
where we can get the soil needed to be mixed with rinsing water. So another, pwede isa-isa lang muna, question nun, follow up. So, uh, where we can get the soil needed to be mixed with cleansing water? So, as long as po yung soil is uh, parang never been touched po siya or hindi po siya nagamit. And pwede rin naman po yung any cleaning agent po as long as makaya niya pong tanggalin yung if ever na may haram substances. So, another follow-up question po. Number two, uh, this is intended also for Ms. Almeda. So, is it the requirements that all halal certificates of ingredients should be issued by the halal certifying body of the company being audited? Example, IDCP issued the certified for ingredients. Would it be accepted by HDIP? So, opo, uh, yung halal certifying body po ang magpo-provide po ng uh, halal certificates sa ingredients at kung ano po ang kanilang requirements. So, nakadepende rin po yun kung sino po yung napili yung cert halal certifying body, whether it is IDCP, HDIP, or yung iba pong uh, halal certifying body. Thank you po. Ayun, thank you po, uh, Ms. Almeda. So, let's now proceed to the next question. Galing po kay Ms. Angela Reyes from our Facebook participant. Here's the question. What if po marami products, do we need to apply each of the item for halal or pwede na as one category? To be answered by Ms. Narisa. Thank you, Ms. Arlene. As what I've said uh, a while ago, so nakadepende po yung sa halal certifying body. Meron po siyang pwedeng uh, sa isang manufacturer ay pwede pong uh, by category po siya. If for snacks or for uh, meat products, meron po siyang per category na kahit, sa ila, uh, kahit isang beses ka lang magpahalal certified o yung lahat ng product mo ay halal certified po siya. So, arrange, so to assure, uh, arrange with the halal certifying body for more uh, information. Thank you po. Thank you very much, Ms. Naraisa. So let's proceed to question number 16 from our Facebook participant by Ma'am Fritzi Montiel. So this is the question. Uh, another question po, enough na po ba yung barrier for the separating halal and haram products or required ba na different vehicle po? This will be answered with, uh, by Ma'am Almeda. Okay. May tinatawag po tayong halal integrity O yung assurance po na yung product po natin ay 100% halal. So kung gusto po natin na ma-assure yung end user natin o yung customer natin ay 100% halal yung product po natin, so mas mabuti i-separate na lang po talaga yung uh, halal sa non-halal para maiwasan po yung possible cross-contamination of any haram substances. Thank you po. Thank you, Ms. Almeda. Let's proceed to the next question. Galing kay Ms. Rhea Spirito from our uh, YouTube participant. So here's the question. Is there really a need to secure halal certification for secondary and tertiary packaging materials even it has no direct contact with products? Sasagutin po ni uh, Ma'am Naraisa. Thank you, Ms. Arlene. So, tanong po ni Ma'am Rhea Espirito, is there really a need to secure halal certification for secondary and tertiary packaging materials even it has no direct contact with products? So, again po, depende pa rin po sa certifying body. Commonly, as long as may maipakita po tayong proof na walang non-halal components sa ginamit po. Thank you po. Thank you so much, Ms. Naraisa. Another question po from our Facebook participant by Ma'am Maria Malaya Polidario. Um, for certification, is training certificate from a trained personnel or training company required? Or can we just implement based on our understanding through research, webinars, or with no certificates? 
So this will be answered by ma answered by Miss Almeda. So for certification po, uh, kailangan din po mag-undergo ng training po para po mas maayos po yung ating halal HACCP system. Actually, yung halal HACCP system po is an ongoing research po. So, hindi pa po siya as ina-apply in the food industry. Pero, um, yung research pa rin po kung pwede po ma-incorporate si halal and sa HACCP po. Thank you po. Ayun, thank you so much, Ms. Almeda. So, let's now proceed to question number 19. Uh, galing po kay Ms. Lelaine J. from our Facebook participant. Is it required to have a Muslim member in creating a halal HACCP team? What if there is no Muslim member in the team? Would like to clarify, is it necessary to have Muslim consultant in creation of halal HACCP if the team does not have Muslim member or is it only encouraged? So, Miss uh, Lilane J, uh, required po na meron pong Muslim member in creating halal hasip to maintain the halal integrity of the product. So, yun po sa sinabi niyong ano, what if there is no Muslim member, so we encourage you to have the Muslim member in your hasip team. So, for to maintain the halal integrity of the product. Thank you po. Thank you very much, Ma'am Narisa. So, let's have our final question this morning. Okay, so this is the final question. Could OPRPs be integrated and considered in the Halal HACCP system? This will be answered by Ma'am Almeda. So yes po, the OPRPs are, should be integrated and considered in Halal HACCP system. Thank you po. Thank you very much, Ms. Almeda. I hope all the questions are answered clearly by our... Oh, okay. Sorry. So, may follow up pa po si Ustad Sadsmi. Okay. Uh, follow up uh, information ko po tungkol dun sa question po kanina ni... Ma'am Justin Camille. Okay, is it necessary for the personal performance sir, to, to, be, to be Muslim? Okay, uh, example po nito ay kapag nadilaan po ng aso yung gamit po, no? Gamit po na ginagamit doon sa produkto. Is it necessary na Muslim po ba yung maglilinis ng gamit? Um, 
okay naman po kung hindi siya Muslim as long as alam niya po kung ano po yung process ng paglilinis ng gamit. No? Kasi meron po tayong uh, pamamaraan sa Islam which is kapag nadikitan ang gamit ng najis ay meron po tayo mga proseso kung paano po ito lilinisin. Um, maybe uh, 50% necessary na Muslim kasi most of this ang nakakaalam lang po ng process na ito ay mga Muslim. No? But my point is kung alam naman din po ang proseso kung paano linisin so po pwede pong kahit hindi naman din po siya Muslim. No? Thank you, ma'am. Again, thank you very much po, Sir Adsmi. I hope all the questions are answered clearly by our speakers this morning. I hope this webinar gives you in inputs on Haral Hasip. At this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, we will now hear Dr. Christine Marie C. Montesa, the UST ITDI Deputy Director of Research and Development, for her closing remarks. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace and mercy of Allah be upon you. Magandang umaga po. First and foremost, I would like to express my appreciation to the organizers, speakers, and all the participants of this webinar for their active engagement and valuable contribution to the halal awareness and halal hazard analysis critical control point webinar. Thank you and congratulations for a successful webinar, Ms. Maria Elsa Falco, Ms. Maria, Maria Dolor Villasenor, and the rest of the team of Food Processing Division, as well as support from PSD and MIS. This has been a very informative and interactive two-day webinar. So we reached about 400 participants in the Facebook, YouTube live webcast. And uh, we are very happy that many of the participants stayed and actively participated until the end during the question and answer portion. Indeed, many of us today are now aware of halal principles, halal assurance management system, and halal hazard analysis. Now, halal is a way of life. Islam is not only a religion, but it is a way of life with rules and manners which governs every facet of life. It is important to our Muslim brothers and sisters to follow what is halal and to avoid what is haram, as this is part of their beliefs in Islam. Food is one of the most important basic needs of our life, and having an awareness about halal and haram is of big help, especially in understanding what is lawful. We need to know the issues related to the concept of halal and how the production process of a product is done according to Islamic halal standards. It is important to have an awareness when handling a halal product. We need to monitor every step to assure that there will be no cross-contamination of haram or any najis during the production to ensure the halalness of the product. By following the halal standards, good manufacturing procedures, and halal hazard analysis critical control points, the manufacturers or producers will have an advantage in their product as they will have the confidence that the product they produce or serve is halal compliant. So today, halal and halal products are booming in different countries. There are a lot of opportunities in halal for manufacturers, especially in food industry, such as in halal meal, poultry and seafood, halal cereals and grains, halal fruits, vegetables and nuts, halal beverages, and other halal foods. So halal is not only for our Muslim brothers and sisters, but halal is for everyone. Because when a product is halal, it does not just tell us that it's free from haram, but it guarantees a product that is safe, good, of good quality, and wholesome product. I hope this halal awareness and halal hazard analysis con critical control point webinar will help each and every one in understanding what halal and haram and how halal hazard analysis critical control point is done. And uh, for our participants, if you have uh, further uh, questions, 
please don't hesitate to uh, inform us here in uh, ITDI. Once again, shukran, thank you, and have a nice day. Thank you so much po, Dr. Christine. Shukran din po ng marami. So we have now reached the end of our event for today, and it was truly amazing. And of course, the evaluation form is now flashed on the screen. Also, it is posted on Facebook and YouTube. So you may accomplish it now by accessing the link given. You may also scan the QR code for your easy access. And of course, this event will not be possible without the industry, academ, government, and media partners who are here with us today. And of course, the support of our very own DOSD Secretary, for, uh, Sir Dr. Uh, Sir uh, Fortunato de la Peña, shukran po ng marami, sir. So if you have queries about food processing division and its product and services, just message ITDI's official Facebook page at DOSD ITDI updates. Thank you so much, Ms. Arlene Remarine. Let me also acknowledge the efforts of the Industrial Technology Development Institute, especially the Food Processing Division, our officer in charge, Ma'am Maria Dolor Elvinia Senior, to our supervising science research specialist, Ma'am Maria Elsa M. Falco, and, that, and to the Technological Services Division, Management Information System, and to all the staff of the Industrial Technology Development Institute, a bundle of thanks to all of you. Maraming maraming salamat po. And let us all stay safe and healthy. Sukran. Tumitilaot na ang manok, hudyat na ng pagpasok. Paglilingkod na walang kapalit sa bayan ng aming hati. Tara na, kaibigan, huwag kang magpaiwan. Gamitin ang dunong bansa'y susulo. Ating abutin ang pangarap iwan sa pamamagay. Mahirap man ay kakayanin Sa pinagsamang lakas at galing Tagumpay ay mararating Tara na, kaibigan Huwag kang magpaiwan Gamitin ang dunong bansa ay susuro At ikabutin ang pangarapiwan Sa pamamagitan na Sa pamamagitan ng magham Ang kaunlaran ay makakamtan Kung lahat magtutulungan Tara na, sama-sama Itaguyod ang siyensya Maayos na bukas para sa Pilipinas Ang pangarap ko ay maging piloto Pangarap ko magkaroon ng Chief Alternative for Personal Hygiene. Pangarap kong magkaroon ng mabilis at murang transportasyon para sa lahat. Pangarap kong masagot ang malnutrition. Pangarap ko pong magkaroon ng effective communication means for emergency. Pangarap kong ma-maximize yung renewable energy source and to reduce the carbon dioxide emission. Pangarap ko 
akong maging scientist. Dahil na o simula na, humanda sabay-sabay akyat. Hawak kamay tayo'y ang ating lipad. Lipad. Hello, hello, sound check. Sound. Sound. 